What's the worst that can happen? People say that to us from time to time, usually to encourage us to try something, to undertake something. When we are in the month of Elul, and we're trying to work on ourselves and improve our spirituality, grow as people, one of the things that we're supposed to focus on is the next person. It can become very easily self-absorbed, this process of self-growth. I need to learn, I need to meditate, I need to improve myself, and we can forget about other people. But the month of Elul is very much about how we engage with other people, how we care for other people, how we reach out to other people. And very often, especially if you're motivated and inspired in your Judaism, you want to reach out to other people to inspire and motivate them too. You've kind of seen the value and you don't understand why they don't see the value. So what should you do? It's tempting sometimes to put yourself into somebody else's space and to lecture them or to pressure them. Why don't you come to shul more often? You really should prepare yourself for Rosh Hashanah, all those kinds of things. The truth is that Elul is a time to extend love, kindness, and care to the next person, regardless of what's going to happen spiritually. There's a fascinating insight in the book of Tanya, which is the seminal work of Chabad Hasidus. In chapter 32, and that's relevant because 32 in Hebrew is written with the same letters that form the word lev, which is the heart. So this is the heart of Tanya, and in a sense, the heart of Judaism. So the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, writes there about the way that we should engage with other people. And he says a number of very important and insightful things. The first one is, we should never look at the next person as being independent of us. Yes, physically, our physical forms are separate. That's due to the limits of physical space, that you're you and I'm me. But spiritually, on a soul level, we are absolutely connected. Which means that when you grow and develop, I am uplifted. And likewise, if I grow and develop, you are uplifted. So instead of looking at people and being critical of where they are in their dedication to Judaism, in their personal growth, we should look at ourselves as partners and collaborators. That's the first point. The second point, he says, is when I reach out to somebody, let's even say that my intention is I would like them to be inspired. I'd like them to be more involved in their Judaism. The way I reach out to them is with unbridled, unlimited care and concern. That means without an agenda. It's not so easy necessarily. Very often we do have our agenda, either overt or covert. So to reach out to somebody without an agenda, just simply to be good to them. Why? Because it's the right thing to be good to somebody. Well, two things could happen. The one thing is they might be inspired by our overtures, and that in itself might draw them close to want to listen to our advice and to our insight. And that'd be a bonus. That'd be great because then whatever we believe should happen in their lives will start to happen because they'll feel warmly towards us and they'll be open to hear what it is that we have to say. But let's assume that doesn't happen. Let's assume that we reach out to somebody and we're good to them and they don't reciprocate and they don't connect and they don't necessarily not only listen to us or take our advice, but they don't necessarily even feel a relationship with us as a result. The Alter Rebbe says something really profound. So what? You have fulfilled what the Torah requires us to do, which is to love your fellow Jew. And whether that does or doesn't bring you any nachas, satisfaction, or benefit is irrelevant. The point is you've done what Hashem wants you to do. At this time of the year, the month of Elul, a big part of what we're meant to do is to reach out and touch somebody else without any expectation of anything in return.